grace and peace be upon you, my brothers, my sisters, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Let's get, let's get right to it. 1 Corinthians 29, verse 6 to 17. Then the chief of the fathers and princes of the tribes of Israel and the captains of thousands and of hundreds with the rulers of the king's work offered willingly and gave for the service of the house of God of gold 5,000 talents and 10,000 drams and a ten of silver 10,000 talents they, they really invested huh? and of brass 18,000 talents and 100,000 talents of iron they are dedicated to the house of God and they with whom precious stones were found gave them to the treasure of the house of the Lord by the hand of Jehilo, the Gershonite. I wish people were focused a bit of their house, their house where they're at right now, their mental house, their physical house. I wish people were more excited to do that for their personal house. That's invest they are serious about God. Who? Oh, oh. Then the people rejoiced. Keyword, rejoice. They're excited. Are we serving God? We, we do this for the Lord. We love the Lord. We're excited. They're not just serving. Uh, yeah, yeah. They are excited. <laughs> People are more excited for the club, for the sports arenas, for, for concerts, for Grammy Awards, for graduation. When it comes to things of God, why? What's up with the what's up with the dragon face? Are we really believers? Do we really believe God exists? Do we really believe this word? And the people rejoiced for that they offered willingly. Because the perfect heart they offered willingly to the Lord. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy. Hallelujah! Yes! Hallelujah! But people nowadays don't rejoice with joy, do they? They don't, they don't rejoice in the, in the house of God. They don't things of God, prayer, Bible study, going to church. They don't evangelism. Where's the joy? Where's the energy? Where's the excitement? Where's the electricity? Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. You see, David was a leader. He set he set the whole precipice. He set the whole place ablaze. What leaders are in your church? If your leader is is. Does that, does that passion, excitement, wisdom, and is it really called or you just did for the money, for the accolades? Where's the excitement? D David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. I, I will bless the Lord before my before the church, be on the streets, at my job. I'll praise the Lord before all people. Oh! And David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. I know he was praying with power. For all that is in heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all. And in thine hand is power and might, and in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now therefore, our God, we, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. Ooh, what a pray, what a pray this is. Who am I? What is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. For we are strangers before thee, and sojourners as were all our fathers. Our days on the earth are as a shadow, and there is none abiding. O Lord our God, all this store that we have prepared to build thee an house for thine holy name. Why? It's for his name's sake, not our sake. And the deacons, pastor, ushers, nobody else's name, his house is most important. It's for his glory, his honor. It's all, and it's all thine own. It's all for God's reputation. It's, it's not to big up the, 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 the people in leadership. It's to, it's to glorify God. Wow, what a man of God. 
I, I know also my God. He said, my God. He didn't say their God, your God. God of his pain was a personal God. When you talk about the Lord, or you say, I'm going to praise my God. I believe in my God. I believe and I serve him with my God. That thou tryest the heart and has pleasure in uprightness. God has pleasure in right doing, right living, right behaving. Not only praying and teaching and sing hallelujahs. That's fine, but God is, is concerned about are you, are you applying that in your everyday living? That's where the pleasure is at. So a lot of people are living with holy hands, are are beating their woman and 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 um not respecting their children and cursing out their co-workers and um, not telling nobody about Christ and playing all sorts of satanic music and watching all sorts of satanic stuff in their home and and n n just cheating, lying, hoeing around, no, do all sorts of nonsense. Anything God is pleased with them because you go to church once a week. Pleasure in uprightness, upright living. Woo! Hallelujah. As for me, in the uprightness of my heart, I have really offered all these things. And now have I seen with joy thy people, which are present here to offer willingly unto thee. So David willingly offered all these things to build the house of God. In the uprightness of his heart, he, he, he enjoyed it. And he has seen with joy. So he set so he set the atmosphere for giving, for service. And he has seen with joy the people doing it. Right? It starts, he started with him. He set the whole atmosphere for giving. He loved to do it. And the people were doing it as well. And of course, because he enjoyed himself doing it, he loved to see others doing it as well. They are present here to offer willingly unto thee. They are present here. They are present here. They gathered together. They shared. Their people believe it's okay that you only serve God by yourself in your home. There is power in corporate worship. There's power in gathering together. Why do we leave and get why do we want to gather in parties and, and sports arenas? and theaters and restaurants but, and we see the importance and value of that but when it comes to gathering together to worship God people gather together to in clubs because the vibes yeah feeling good dancing they drinking and all that the sports really yeah fans gather together so they boost each other up they reinforce each other's habits and beliefs in that they see the importance of gathering together to, to fuel it to grow it. Why, why are there award shows? Why, why do people do that? Because there, there's something about gathering together and celebrating accolades and celebrating the accomplishments of, of what people have accomplished and, uh, and honoring people of graduations and, and um, baby showers. We want to celebrate people. We want to celebrate what, what they, what's, what their, their um, new milestone in their life. So what is the issue Go gather together and celebrate the greatness of our God. How big He is. How high He's provided. Why can't we fellowship? Why can't we gather together and celebrate our God? His greatness. His amazing majesty. There is that is needed. That that is value. A lot of people don't don't want to go to church because, and gather with people because they don't see them. They don't value God like they came to do. They don't value people. Oh. Like they claim they do. And we gather, we gather strength, we get we get reinforced, we get empowered. It's time for private worship, but it's also time for public worship. They, they gave, we'll go back to this verse again. They gave gold, thousands of talents, drams, silver, thousands. They were they were given generously. Blessed. Those are some blessed people. Whoa. Blessed people. They had a lot to give. They were obedient to God. God blessed them and they gave, they gave back. They always were provided for. They were always taken care of. They were obedient to God. 
I'm going to go to another study relationships. Some husband or wives, man, they just together, but they're not together. The excitement, the joy of opening a door and writing poetry and cooking and cleaning and all going on dates and picnics. Where, where's the joy at? Where's the excitement as the years go by? It's like it all just goes away. It goes down. It goes away. The excitement of serving one another. At the time, it was so I was so happy to do it, but now I was like, ugh. They do it, but it's like their heart is not in it. The here I see all in this ver these passages about giving generously and happily and joyfully. Oh, can you go cook cook the meal from? For the kid, yeah, yeah, all right, all right. Can you go and cook or t pick up the kids from f f school, practice? Yeah, all right. Do the laundry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Or sometimes they don't even answer each other at all. What a party time. Yes, I'll do it for you, baby. I'll, yes. Okay, you don't gotta go overboard like that. <laughs> but you know, with some, with some swag to it, with some, with some, Enemy to it, yes. All right, babe. All right, babe. I do. I do. Why does it have to die out after all these years of being together? Have we lost the sense of value of the person? Jesus, the joy when you when you when you when you just where's that first love? Don't lie yourself. If, if you lost that, you can get it back. And it can be better than before. Don't let the distractions and cares of this world keep you from really appreciating your boo, your husband, your wife. Rejoice in the wife of your youth. Just joyfully serve one another. A lot of people, they serve God similar. No joy, no enthusiasm. Or if they had it before, they lost it. When you time to help out your kids with, with their homework. Oh yeah, yeah, another day of homework. I'll be happy to invest in your children. Show show them that you actually enjoy teaching. Show them that show them that education is very important. It's exciting. When you talk to them about a particular issue, uh, education, uh, when they're older, sex, uh, relationships, money management, health habits, put some joy in it, get some excitement. When you go see them at their game or Attend a conference with them, a, a meeting with them, parent-teacher conference with them. Just, where's the excitement? Where's the engagement? When you talk to your the mailman, hello, hello, thank you so much. God bless you, God bless you. On this, oh, thank you, oh, thank you. How are you? I'm, I'm all right, I'm fine. I'm fine, I'm saying, oh, I'm exuberant, I'm excited, I'm, I'm passionate. <laughs> I'm blessed by the Lord, highly favored mailman. Thank you so much for the mail. Have a wonderful day. Rather than, okay. When you go to the cashier and get your groceries, uh, okay, do the transaction. All right, thank you. Have, have a wonderful day. Have a, how about this? Have a wonderful day. God bless you. Thank you for your service. You know, I need at least a little more excitement. There's some, something a little more, a little more oomph. A little more, uh, <laughs> a little more than the, than, than the regular way of interacting. Whoever, the grocery clerk, the person at the mall, the, your co-workers. Sometimes you get so used to the same people or co-workers. Hello, yeah, I'm fine. I make sure by the grace of God, I say, God bless you. Good to see you. Much love. And, oh, how are you doing? Grace and peace be upon you. What's up? What's going on? Bow, bow, you know? What's, where's, where's that relational power? That relational efficacy? That relational joyfully given is... There's some wives, man. His husband wants sex and she's not really into it. But she gives it grudgingly. Just to please him, but... She's not emotionally connected. So she's just giving her body, but her mind isn't there. Her soul isn't there. 
A lot of it's because the husband is not making investment to her mind, to her soul. They're just together, but they're not together. They're not together in mind and soul anymore. They're just together legally. Something has something has changed. Something something has been altered that they have to get back. So she just gives her body grudgingly and she's not really into it and and he knows, well, because he wants his pleasure, he wants his satisfaction, he just he just gets it, he just receives it, and okay, that's it. And there's not much communication that, that there used to be, there's not much joy, there's not much engagement, there's not much, so just, so there's a rift, there's a separation. So both people have to, have to investigate and see where have we fallen, what has happened? and work to heal if there's any, any wounds, any bad words spoken, any any um, unmet expectations. You need to address those things and make steps to heal the wound or it's going to fester. And all my doing wherever I go, my future wife, future children, uh, my coworkers, my ministry, where I, wherever I go, the store, the mall, the, the uh, amusement park, a business meeting. Uh, that's that's another thing too. So, some of y'all have work, you have jobs where it's, you, you gotta go on Skype, you gotta go on Zoom, and you know sometimes people can be. I know you gotta be professional, but sometimes some, sometimes people are just so. Loosen up a bit, you know, so laugh a bit, have fun and, you know, talk business, talk, talk, you know, be professional, but sometimes people are just so uptight and just so, even in their job, whether it's a Zoom call, whether it's being there themselves, they don't, they don't, they don't relax, they don't really let the joy of the Lord be with them wherever they go, they, they leave it for certain people or certain place. But here we gotta be all professional. We gotta be, you know, it's work as usual. But where's the joy? The light, let your light so shine before men, everybody. They don't say bef before only your, your close friends. Let your light so shine before people, except your coworkers, except your boss, everybody. There should be a distinctness about you. You, know, you you gotta be you know careful, be wise, but there should be some excitement still. It should be some sh some way glorifying God. Show that show God's glory. Let it reflect through you. Hmm. Be wise about it, but still do it. Still do it. Heavenly Father, I pray, Father, for every relationship at this time. I'm speaking um, really specifically, mostly for a husband and wife. Oh God, for there to be excitement, you know, any relationship. Even though that's that's my the main one. I'm really focusing on any relationship. Let it, let us give, not just not just money and or sex, but time, but service, attention, affection. Words of affirmation. I pray that we can give with excitement. God, God, restore our excitement. Restore joy. Restore a give. Help us to really want to give. Want to be there for um, our family and our friends and our, our our romance partner. I pray we can have that excitement again. Electrify us. Revive us. Whatever. Um, Comfortable discussion must be spoken about. I pray we can do it boldly, lovingly, patiently, gently. It must be spoken. I pray for breakthrough in relationships right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Well, we see how amazingly relevant the Bible is. We see that David, as a leader of, his, of his, the church, set the atmosphere for the whole congregation to give as well. They work together. He saw with joy the people who were giving. When I see people giving generously in church, not just money, but their time, their service. When I see people getting their money together, growing in their wealth, couples coming together, working together, building together, marriages restored, children restored back to the parents in wonderful connection, people getting along in, in, with their coworkers or their job. When I see better relationships in the communities, play with, with the police and the community, that that will be better. When, when we can better just, first it starts with us, checking ourselves, and then make, and then working out toward other people. I pray that we can give out of love, out of, uh, out of wanting to make a better impact, a stronger impact for our legacy, for our, our, our lineage, and for the people around us. Because how I live, how I behave, affects other people and vice versa. But I pray we can give um, because we want to give. We want to see people better. Not just give because I, I got to do it. Obligation, compulsion. Oh, they're my kids. They are the, I gave birth to them. I married her. So yeah, yeah, I got to do whatever for her. But we, no, no. Because we want to. We are, we are people who are, should be serving out of love. Out of anticipation and excitement. And ultimately, ultimately because you want to glorify God. Please him. Make him proud. Smile. I want, to, I want him to smile at me. I want him to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done. Pray that God will help us have better um, intentions in our heart, in our soul. Clean, clean, up those, clean up those bad intentions. Make it pure. Pure motives. Hallelujah. <laughs> God bless you all. Grace and peace be upon you all. I love you all with the love of Christ. Much love.